Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 11 december 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin is in English, just like the Monday morning repeat. We have a lot of news and in addition to that we have some Morse code and an SSTV image in PD90 of a famous amateur radio operator. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service. Canberra, Darwin, Hobart. These will be the next in line for permanent DAB Plus digital radio services. Chief Executive Officer of the industry body Commercial Radio Australia, Joan Warner, said commercial broadcasters were working closely with the ABC and SBS on the regional rollout plans. We've been aware for some time that local listeners in regional areas are extremely keen to have the DAB Plus services introduced and we're working closely with the public broadcasters to make this happen, she said. Digital Radio was launched in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth in 2009. The technology offers better sound than AM, FM, analogue services and additional features such as extra stations, images and live text. For example, in Brisbane there are something like 57 radio stations operating on DAB+, free to air. Commercial broadcasters Capital Radio and Canberra FM have been running trial digital radio services in Canberra and grant broadcasters have also been on air in Darwin on a trial basis. DAB Plus enables broadcasters to launch many pop-up stations. These, particularly over Christmas, will provide Christmas music and they're also able to provide 24-7 emergency services bulletins in times of fire or flood. Another prominent shortwave broadcasters is going dark. The Shortwave Listening Post blog reports Radio Australia has announced it will cease its shortwave transmissions on January 31. The station, popular with shortwave listeners, broadcasts in the 31, 25, 19 and 16 metre bands. The move is in line with the national broadcaster's commitment to dispense with outdated technology and to expand its digital content offerings. Radio Australia programming will remain available via streaming, satellite and other media. An earthquake in Indonesia. A 6.5 magnitude earthquake has struck an area of Aceh province, Indonesia, claiming dozens of lives and causing widespread damage. Dozens of houses and shops were destroyed, trapping many people after the quake Wednesday morning. The chief of Arare Aceh province, YB6 Alpha Alpha, confirmed that radio amateurs were in the field to support the disaster communications to help injured people. Jim Linton, VK3PC chairman, IARU Region 3 Disaster Communications Committee, told VK1WIA National News that Arari members in Ashe and Medan North Sumatra are working on 7.110 MHz and also local 2 metre FM VHF frequencies. A request has been made to keep those frequencies clear for emergency traffic, particularly 7.110 MHz. ACMA investigates serious interference. The Australian Communications and Media Authority has found that well over half of all reception problems reported are caused by deficiencies in receivers, inadequate or faulty antenna installations or attempts to receive distant broadcasting services. The ACMA has also found that in less than 1% of cases involving amateur radio, the apparatus licence station was the cause. Many interference complaints investigated could be resolved by the viewer or listener themselves or with the help of a service technician. The ACMA has a booklet available designed as a self-help guide to resolve reception problems in a home. It provides illustrations and descriptions that will help identify the most likely cause of the interference and suggests appropriate steps to remedy the problem. Testing of the 5G standard by US telcos Verizon and AT&T has begun with the rollout of the latest iteration of wireless signal likely to be a commercial reality by 2020. As the name suggests, it will be the fifth generation of wireless signal and along with it will come many features, the best thing being speed. How will this affect electronics? In many ways. Worldwide, there is an estimated 6 billion devices connected to wireless technology. By 2020, the number is set to more than triple to almost 21 billion. Until recently, the majority of wireless devices were smartphones, tablets, televisions and laptops. However, with home automation sales also set to increase by up to $28 billion by 2020, there is plenty of scope for our producers of electronics componentry. Some products that will be taking advantage of 5G super speed include cars, 
door locks, home appliances, security cameras, gaming consoles, drones, wearables and even things such as dog collars and virtual reality devices. Now the electronics components industry has a chance to jump on what could be a lucrative bandwagon. We learn from VK7WI News that Hitachi has developed a lensless camera. And no, we're not talking of the school project cardboard box pinhole camera. Hitachi has developed a camera technology which allows video imagery to be recorded without a lens. What's more, the imagery can be focused after recording. All this is made possible by a film printed with a pattern of concentric circles. The new technology enables cameras which are lighter and thinner because they do not need a lens. And it makes it easier to mount cameras anywhere desired on various devices. An ability to focus on specific objects in the image after recording makes this technology suitable for a wide range of applications, including task assistance, driverless vehicles, and analysis of human behaviour with phones, vehicles and robots. A new book on SDR for amateur radio operators, shortwave listeners, and anyone interested in radio as a hobby is not a textbook. It is written in an easy-to-read conversational style. The book at 308 pages is a lot bigger than some other books on software-defined radio, and this time it is available in print or from Kindle for most e-readers. It includes sections on how different types of software-defined radios work, the advantages of using them, and how they are tested. It also covers future trends including the development of direct Fourier conversion. There is a big section with tips for power SDR users, and sections about other commonly used SDR software, plus a comparison of the basic specifications of 65 different SDR receivers and transceivers. Please check it out at the link we like, shown in the text edition on wia.org.au. Inmiddels zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo. En denk eraan, als je gaat solderen, dat je steeds alleen de kant van de soldeerbout vastpakt waar het draadje uitkomt. <middels>